الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I would like to uh, welcome you all to Ikna Dawa Conference 2020 Islam the, the solution in times of confusion um, Inshallah we have uh, I will be your host for the session uh, titled The Golden Ticket and we have an amazing lineup of speakers um, next up, inshallah, um, we have uh, Dr. Ingrid Madsen to uh, talk to us on the topic of clash of ideas on college campuses. Uh, Dr. Madsen is the London and Windsor Chair in Islamic Studies at Huron University College at Western University in Canada. She has served as a Vice President and the President of Islamic Society of North America, uh, the first woman to do so in either positions. And uh, Alhamdulillah, she also served and and does serve, still serve on several interfaith and nonprofit boards. She's a teacher and author, um, and uh, her writings focus on Quranic studies, theological ethics, and interfaith management. So, uh, inshallah, uh, we'll have Dr. Thank Matt's you, Nick Brother Sharik. Assalamu alaikum, everyone who's joined us for this wonderful convention. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Subhanallah, listening to Imam Griggs, it's just an amazing reminder of how much suffering there is in the world and, and in our own communities, and so much of it is hidden. It's hidden deliberately away from us so that it's much easier for us to ignore it. It reminds me of the very important teaching of the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who says, whenever you ha see someone who has more, look to someone who has less. And the looking is an, is an active motion. It's not passive. It's not just to see something, but it's to look. So this society is really oriented uh, in a way to make us always look to those who have more. That's what advertising is based on, to create desire within us, to create a sense that we, um, that we lack something, whether that's <clears throat> how we look physically in our relationships, above all in our material goods. And that if only we bought or purchased these other things, we would be happy. And that's why to be a Muslim, like to really be able to live Islam in the society means that we constantly have to make that shift from, from seeing those who have more to moving our, our gaze towards those who have less. And for those of us who are living on university campuses, uh, clearly what we see is that we collectively really are in a position of privilege. Um, now, of course, and I will mention this, on campuses there are those with less and there are those who are marginalized. But overall, I want us first to embrace this understanding that this is a, a, a privilege and an opportunity to continue to develop our many capacities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, our spiritual capacities, our intellectual capacities, our capacity for socializing in a way to understand how to create um, communities that function well and that meet their purpose, that we have all of those opportunities when we are on campuses, whether we are faculty or students, and it is so important to be grateful for these opportunities and to take advantage of these opportunities to grow the best way we can as individuals and collectively as Muslim communities. It's a short time, but it is a, it is a time where we are relieved of many of our other obligations that we will have in our lives. Um, and we... You know, it, it is that chance to really dig deep into um, areas of growth that are so necessary. So how how do we do that? This this talk is about clash of ideas of, on campus, and certainly this is the view or the perspective through which many Muslims look. 
um, and and consider themselves as Muslims, maybe in a somewhat hostile environment. And that's because there are Islamophobic groups on campus. There may be professors who are criticizing Islam in their in the classrooms. There may be other student groups that seem to be oriented towards bringing Muslims down or you, you know, uh, bringing in speakers who um, who attack Muslims or many of the causes that are dear to our hearts. But this is, will be our first mistake, that if we consider ourselves this, you know, embattled community that must um, uh, sort of gird ourselves and, towards, uh, and put all of our eth efforts towards self-defense, we will completely miss the opportunity for growth that is being given to us here. We cannot be distracted all the time by the voices of opposition and criticism, those who are trying to poke us or prod us into responding. To be uh, only responsive means that we are letting others set uh, the agenda for us. And those who set the agenda for us are the ones who really are shaping the cultural conversation then. We need to think about what our priorities are and what goals we have as a campus community. You know, for, for uh, at least a decade now, much of education has been oriented towards outcomes. So as a professor, I have had to, I had to begin uh, about a decade ago, begin to put on my syllabi what are the learning goals of my course? What are the outcomes that are intended by this course? Meaning that once the students take my course, what should they be able to do that they could not do earlier? So I want us to think about that as campus communities. What, what do we want as we come together as a Muslim Student Association or a Muslim campus community what is the point of that? What is the goal of that? And what are the outcomes that we intend? And let me say that, that first of all, our goal should be to create a, a safe, compassionate, welcoming community for each other, for ourselves, because we, we deserve that. We deserve a space that is for ourselves, where we feel comfortable where we feel welcomed, where we feel at home. So we don't look to the outside first. We first look to each other. And this will require more than just um, doing things as they've been done before, because when we get on campus, we're going to see that there are Muslims from different points of view, different cultural, different ethnic communities that we may not have encountered before. Or we may find that most Muslims come from one particular ethnic or cultural group. And no matter what our intention is, we may not want to deliberately exclude people, but just the fact that we have a majority of uh, people from a particular cultural background um, or uh, ethnic community, there are others who will feel left out and unwelcome. And the worst thing for Dawa is to have a uh, Muslim community that's talking about beautiful values and principles of Islam, but is not living that. Uh, a community that's talking about justice, but is not practicing justice among themselves. A community that's talking uh, about the beautiful messages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us and that um, the Prophet Muhammad SAW gave us about the equality of humanity, yet within our own communities, we see that, um, that uh, speech that has racist um, implications is not being addressed, or that there are um, talks that are being given or practices that marginalize the women in our community. Yet we have, you know, literature about Islam and, the, and, and how Islam uplifts women, yet we see women being squeezed out of Muslim spaces on campus. So there are three areas that we need 
to look at first for ourselves to be that community that is a witness to um, the beauty of Islam. Islam is not an ideology. It's not a thing that we talk about over there. And unfortunately, in much of the 20th century, when I first became a Muslim, Islam really was portrayed very often in that way. You know, Islam versus socialism, Islam versus capitalism, as if Islam is an ism or is an ideology. That is not what Islam is. Islam is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we first must uh, try to embody ourselves and then together in com communities embody. So the first thing is we have to create those communities that really uplift and focus the spiritual life of, of our community and make ibadat possible. We need that space and it has to be a space that is, that is welcoming, that is clean, that is safe. And of course, it's a place where we can pray our mandatory prayers, um, where we can gather um, during Ramadan for iftar. Now, where we're withdrawn from that opportunity to be together in person. So uh, we're also thinking, what does it mean that we do now? One of the things I would like to say that whether it is in person or virtually, that we should add to that spiritual life really is to have a more robust life of prayer and dua. And, and what I mean by that is that we tend to, when we're being raised Muslim, very often what we see are, and we're, and we're taught to, um, to memorize uh, many of the, the du'as that um, the Prophet Muhammad SAW taught us, traditional du'as, and they are in Arabic, and that's, that's fine. But prayer is our communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And very often people make dua and they, they're not even sure what it, what it necessarily means. So we need to, on campus, first of all, get used to praying in English. Prayers in English are accepted. Where we really think about what we are asking individually and as a community and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we get in the practice of praying for each other, praying for our communities, praying for those around us. And one of the beautiful opportunities for da'wah is to open this up to others on campus. So whether it's sitting at a table or having a little message board, Having it open, you know, for someone to drop something in the in the box, or um, maybe online, people would have to sign in. But people across campus, Muslim or not Muslim, could send in their prayer requests and say, you know, I have had, I'm really struggling with this issue. I'm struggling with loneliness. I'm struggling with issues with my family. I'm struggling with addiction. Whatever it is, and they ask for prayer. Prayer is, is, of course, our direct communication with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's also the way that we show compassion to each other. And the most important thing, the thing that is our duty on earth is to show compassion towards each other. Uh, the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet Muhammad السلام, as rahmatan al-alameen, as a mercy to the world. And we are, through, through purification and worship, should really be the ones who reflect that um, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who follow in the path of the Prophet Muhammad SAW as bringing mercy to other people. And there's always something that we can say um, to uplift people's spirit where we can ask, you know, uh, many people think, well, all we can do for non so-called non-Muslims, and I heard the the end of the panel earlier, people say, well, how can we pray for, you know, non-Muslims who have died or, um, but of course, we can always recognize that Allah's mercy encompasses all people. We can always ask and pray for people to have greater sakina in their heart, to have conviction that we ask Allah to increase their knowledge. We ask Allah to take away the loneliness that is in people's heart and Allah knows best how that loneliness is relieved. So I believe that, that really turning our attention in a, in a broad way um, from a kind of clash of ideas, a very heady intellectual thing, to um, 
to a community, compassionate community where we pray for each other in addition to feeding each other and have a very warm, hospitable environment is something that is critical for going ahead. Second, we do have those intellectual debates and there will be times when we need to answer questions. Unfortunately, many of the people who are being asked to answer those questions are ill prepared for doing it. They have a, you know, a Sunday school idea of Islam and that's why it's so important that that when we think about well who's going to talk about those things how are we going to engage with those issues that there is a um, an agenda a curriculum for the MSA of learning together and there's so many opportunities to do that now we have you know Yaqeen has subhanAllah so many great publications on difficult questions or issues in Islam. So I would say that together, the Muslim community really needs, the Muslim student community needs to sit together and create for themselves a learning um, program that is for them. And they can bring in the people, you know, other experts as necessary. Um, and then the third thing is uh, somehow my time, so as this 15 minutes passes really quickly, um, is to go back to this idea of the structure of the student community, the governance of the student community. Um, we see that in our Muslim communities, unfortunately, many of our masajid and Islamic centers really have not gotten this issue right we still have places where it is not safe for many Muslims to go. I, I really encourage you to go to our project, harmaproject.com, uh, H-U-R-M-A, project.com, where we're addressing the issue of um, lack of safety in some Muslim spaces. So how do we how do we get to that point? Well, this generation, the college age generation of students needs to figure out how to work together with um, respect for each other, to have true shura, which is inclusion, not just consultation. That doesn't mean there's like someone in charge and they just ask a few people. No, where there's true inclusion, where there's grievance processes, where there's ways for the community to continually improve themselves. And when we do that and when we embody that, especially with transparency, these are the things that are going to attract people to us. So the best da'wah is done by a community that is spends most of its time internally on correcting its own faults um, individually and collectively and then and from that basis of purification is able then to offer programming from a position of spiritual strength, organizational strength and a foundation of knowledge inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Matson. Those are some very great tips for MSAs and student bodies to uh, to adapt, uh, especially in today's time. So uh, with that, um, you know, just wanted to point out another uh, brilliant effort that uh, Ikna Gain Peace has been uh, has been doing in, in putting up billboards, mailing postcards, running social media campaigns on the topic of justice and racism. Alhamdulillah, we've had billboards up in cities like Bay Area, Sacramento, Houston, all over the nation and uh you know with the with the message that really pertains to the time and needs of this current society and the the social issues so i would really encourage uh everyone to take some time and donate um financially and your time in terms of volunteering um so with that uh i will pass uh, this on to the next moderator for the next session jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh